What's going on guys? As I'm sure you've come to realize, the thought of buying a home can be pretty confusing. Probably one of the most confusing things that all of us are going to be dealing with. The good news is, it doesn't have to be. Today, we're going to be figuring out how much it really costs to buy a house as a first time home buyer. So let's get to it. One of the most confusing parts is the amount of money needed in order to purchase a home. There's a lot of misinformation out there about down payments, closing costs, appraisals, inspections, how much you pay your realtor, and it, the list just goes on and on and on. It leaves a lot of people thinking that you have to save up every single penny possible for three years so that one day you can achieve the American dream of the picket fence, the nice neighbors, and the car in the garage, like the beautiful classic car in the garage. Home ownership. You also have the other set of people that have been blasted by the 0% down or low down payment advertisements showing off realtors that we all know need to have that picture updated and it was taken who the hell knows when you know who you are one sounds near impossible and the other one sounds like it could be too good to be true so which one is it let's break it down to two easy sections section one the down payment there's tons of loan programs out there and sometimes you can even talk to local lenders to have them create something specific to your needs so i highly recommend that you do speak to your loan officers to try to see if there's any way that they can create something for you or just to give you the best possible advice for your specific situation for the sake of this video though let's just go ahead and stick with the main programs available program number one which is what we're going to be focusing on most in this video because of the fact that they help out first-time home buyers a lot more and make it a lot easier for them to be able to qualify for things is going to be FHA. Now, this is a government insured loan program. This is really popular amongst first time home buyers because of the low down payment as low as 3.5%. And on top of that, it's a little bit more flexible with your credit rating. There is a loan limit that you qualify for that's highly dependent on your area. For example, ours here in Fresno, California just got increased to 421. So before the down payment, you're looking at a house about 436,000. It got increased this past month by I think like roughly $70,000, which was actually substantial, but in your area, it could be completely different. It could be lower or it could be higher. The national average right now for a home is 375,000. So if you're qualifying for an FHA 3.5% down, you're looking at $13,125. You can get this lower by trying to qualify for the down payment assistance program that FHA does have available. However, there there are a couple caveats that you have to take into consideration. Number one, you have to have a better credit score. You're looking at 660. And number two, you actually get an increased interest rate. But the good news is that if you do qualify for this, the down payment assistance program actually covers 3% of your down payment, which leaves you only responsible for the 0.5%. So with that said, if you go for this program, instead of having to pay the 13,125, you'd actually only be looking at 1,875. Next up, VA. Now the VA loans are only available for those of you that have served in the armed forces and the US government actually guarantees that you're either going to pay that loan back or they will. And so much so that they're actually willing to cover the full balance of the loan. So that means 0% down on you. Sometimes you can even qualify for up to 103%. So they cover part of the closing costs as well without having to pay PMI. Now there are some caveats involved in this as well, but we can cover those in a different video. Finally, we're going to be looking at conventional loans, which is the most common type of loan program out there. Now they do normally require higher credit scores. However, because of that, they also tend to give you a stronger loan with more competitive rates. There's tons of different variations to the conventional loan programs. So you're looking at 3% down, 5%, 10%, 20%, 20 down payment assistance. There's tons tons now if you do want some assistance of trying to figure out like which one could be the best for you just hit me up or drop a comment below and we can try to figure it out together again for the sake of this video let's just focus on fha hey. i know super that brings us to section two which is the fixed costs now fixed costs are going to be highly dependent on your area so i do want you to understand that i can't give you concrete numbers that you can take everywhere however what we're going to do is we're going to take a range and then we're going to add it all up so that we can get the totals to be on the safe side that brings us to item number one 
earnest money. This is a deposit that somebody puts up front after an offer gets accepted. It's kind of a way for you to be able to tell the seller that you're serious and you have skin in the game and you're not just a tire kicker that's going to waste their time. Now after your offer is accepted, you have three days to be able to get this money in. And don't worry, it's not like it's just going straight to the seller. It's actually held in an escrow account and what ends up happening is they hold it until everything is negotiated and finalized. It also doesn't just go once everything's finalized. This money actually gets directly applied to whatever you owe at the end. So in other words, let's just say that you owe $3,000 and you put $1,500 down as a earnest money. At the end, you would only end up owing the other $1,500. Earnest money has a huge range, and I mean huge. Typically, you're gonna be looking at anywhere from one to 3%. However, depending on your area, it could also just be a fixed cost. Generally though, the higher the, the amount that you put, the stronger your offer ends up being. So if you're looking at a home that's 375,000 and you're putting 1% down, you're gonna be looking at $3,750. Fixed cost number two, we're looking at appraisals. Think of an appraisal as a means for the lender to be able to reduce their risk. So they send somebody out to the house to check the value of the house, to make sure that if they're gonna lend you $375,000, the property is actually worth 375,000 or more. Because what would end up happening if you stop paying the property property and they're stuck with a property that's only worth 300,000. They just lost $75,000, right? Cause they can't take that back and sell it to somebody else. So they want to make sure that if that happens, they can at least sell off the property later and make that money back. It's your responsibility to pay for these appraisals and typically they're gonna range anywhere from about 350 to about 600. Now, the number that usually comes up across the board, you know, my wife and I have purchased plenty of rental properties and we see it come up with clients as well, is about 500. Now, it's not always gonna be the case, but that's usually the number that we, we see come up a lot. Hey, psst, it doesn't hurt to ask your lender if they can cover that fee, just saying. That leaves us with number three on our list, Home inspections. Home inspections are not absolutely necessary. However, I highly recommend them. Now, if you're an experienced investor and you decide to go out and just wave them all together because you've walked a property, you know exactly what you're doing, you have contractors going out and checking them for you, by all means, wave that. However, if you're buying something used and you don't have the experience behind it, get an inspection. Also, if you have a lender involved, it's very likely that they're gonna need an inspection. You can find inspections as low as, let's say $200, and they range up to about $500. Now, finding someone in the $200 range is gonna be pretty rare. Sometimes you also have people that go out there and tell you that they have special equipment, they can check behind the walls, or they can check this or check that, and they charge even more, but you don't need all of that stuff. A good quality professional is gonna cost you probably around $350. That's the average that you're gonna see across the board. Also remember that you do have a choice with who you use as an inspector, and you don't have to go with whoever your realtor suggests. However, do keep in mind that if the realtor suggests someone, it's probably because they trust them and they've been reliable and know what they're doing. So number four on fixed costs is closing costs. This is probably the most surprising and confusing part for anyone in a real estate transaction. It's very lender specific as some lenders might charge more, some might charge less, and you also have to take into consideration insurance, transfers fees, recording fees. A lot of these fees that personally I find to be kind of ridiculous, but they are necessary. Typically a safe number to assume is gonna be 3% of the purchase price. However, remember, this is very lender and area specific as well. Insurance might be lower or higher in your area, taxes might be as well, and you might even just find yourself a lender that's willing to waive a few fees here and there, huh? huh? But let's assume 3%. So if we're looking at a house that's 375,000, you'd be looking at $11,250. Also in certain situations, and obviously assuming that you're under the right market conditions, you might be able to get a seller to actually cover part of your closing costs for you, if not the entire thing. Now, I'm gonna make a video at a later point covering the different ways that you could actually make sure to include this as part of your contract, so make sure to like and subscribe so you can get notified when that actually comes out. For now, let's stick with the 11,250. All right, so it's time to figure it all out. So if you got the down payment assistance, you'd be looking at this right here, which leaves you with a total of this right here. Now, if you didn't get the down payment assistance, this right here, which leaves you the total of this right here. Now, initially you might look at it and think the down payment assistance looks so much better, right? But 
you also have to take into consideration that you have a higher interest rate. So is it really worth it? That depends on your situation again. If this is just a stepping stone home, then yeah, maybe. The difference in payment goes from 2079 to 2242. That's a difference of $163. So in a matter of five years, you're looking at about $9,800, which if you decided to sell it at that point, you would have actually saved yourself $1,450. That's totally worth it in that situation. However, let's just say that you decide to stay longer and this isn't just a stepping stone home, you stay the full 30 years, you would end up paying $60,000 more. It's not so worth it at that moment. Now, I want you to keep in mind what I said earlier about a seller covering the closing costs for you because you could be looking at substantially less than this number. I don't want you to get discouraged and feel like this is just unattainable. There's plenty of people that have done this exact thing with much lower funds. Let's just look at it in this scenario. If you get a seller to cover half of your closing costs, this right here, okay? Now, if you manage to get them to cover the entire thing for you, this right here. Looks a lot better now, doesn't it? I hope this helps you get a good idea of what to expect when purchasing your first home. Now, this isn't concrete as you're totally different than the person that lives next door to you, but it should at least help you understand it a little bit more. Now, I highly recommend that you find yourself a good realtor that can help you save in every area possible and really listens to your situation to make sure that they address everything that you actually need. Now, if you're in the Fresno area, don't hesitate to reach out. I would love to be able to help you out. You can text, call, email, whatever you feel most comfortable with. However, if you want to take a slower approach and aren't quite ready to talk yet, no worries. Just go ahead and visit my website, check out all the properties that are available in the area. And when you are ready to talk, I'll be here for you. I'll make sure to leave the link in the description below. If I've left you with more questions, please make sure to drop them in the comment section below so we can get the conversation started. And so it also gives me a good idea of the types of videos that I should be putting out. However, this is all I got for you for this one. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, bye.